Lathes with subspindles just make me happy. Uh, there's no other way to say it. Having that back spindle allows us to hand off parts and to do finishing work, deeper work on that back spindle so we can finish everything in one shot. And if we add a Haas bar feeder, what we really have is a little self-contained factory. So if you're running a, a, a single spindle lathe right now, transitioning to a dual spindle lathe is just unbelievably painless. And that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna show you everything that you need to know from programming to setup in this Haas tip of the day. If you can program this, you can program this. Now, as far as our code goes, the only difference between those two programs is a single G code, a G14. Now, we can drop a single G14 at the beginning of our program, and that's gonna get the job done. But typically, I like to put one at the beginning of each tool call, in with the rest of our safe startup line information. This is our best practice. Here's our part programmed for the main spindle running in graphics. Now here's that same part with everything having been programmed for our main spindle, but with an added G14 spindle swap command. G14 isn't just the easiest way to program parts on our subspindle. It is the only way. When running a G14, the control is not gonna start our main spindle. It's gonna start our subspindle. G14 is gonna take care of all of this for us. It mirrors everything programmed for the main spindle to run automatically on our subspindle. Turning, tapping, threading, everything, and converts it to run seamlessly on our subspindle with this single code, program for the main spindle, and then use a G14. Now we will go ahead and link to our G14 example program in the description of this video so you can check it out for yourself. Completely painless. Now we do have subspindle specific M and G codes. Uh, M143 is gonna start that subspindle going clockwise. And, and that's useful for G199 part handoffs and for uh, just starting up the spindle manually so we can skim it just by hand jogging. But we're never gonna use those type of codes when actually machining a part from within our program. Not necessary. In fact, if we tried to machine with an M143, we would just get alarms. G14, that is our code. If you have programmed a Haas lathe, then you have used G15 in the past. Uh, G15 cancels G14 spindle swap, but it's on by default all the time. You can go to your current commands active codes page and see whether you are in G15 or G14. Programming a subspindle part just could not be any easier. We don't have to learn a whole new set of G and M codes. This is Haas simple, G14 and done. Now it's time for our part setup. And before we can set our tool and our work offsets, we've got a decision to make. We have to decide where we want that subspindle during our G14 machine operation. And that subspindle is our B axis. Now for this part on this machine, we're gonna send our B axis to B minus eight inches, uh, about B minus 200 millimeters. Now I chose this spot because it gives us enough room, <laughs> just barely enough room for a safe tool change. Now we could have left our B axis all the way back at the, at the home position at B zero uh, when we wanted to do our machining, but this is gonna cost us a few seconds of cycle time. We can save a few seconds by bringing it up closer. And on larger lathes, this makes a difference. G53 is our machine position. It's a constant. It's not affected by our work offsets. It's not affected by mirroring. And we can write this G53 value right into our programs, which is why I like this method. If G53 machine positioning is confusing, we made a video on G53 and we will link to it. We could have added this minus eight inches to a work offset. If we're using G55, we could add minus eight inches to our B axis column. And then when we command G55, G0, B0, it'll pull that subspindle into the exact same position. But again, we're gonna use the G53 method in this video just because I like it. With that subspindle position set in stone, we can go ahead and set up our tools. Now we'll wanna make sure that our inserts are facing the correct direction, right hand, left hand, and that everything clears that turret. Now with these rear facing tools, 
we do have a higher risk of uh, tools bumping into that turret. Before I loaded up this drill, I taped a section of cardboard to a short tool and sent it through a tool change to make sure everything cleared before loading up our real tool. Now leave us a comment and let us know how you check for tool clearance. I'm always interested to know how other machinists are getting it done. For this demonstration, we're running the exact same part on both our main spindle and our sub spindle. Uh, but before we can set our tools, there are a few things we have to agree on. We've got some subjective decisions that have to be made, just like every job. And we've decided that on this part, we're gonna do a tool change at G53, G0, X0, Z minus 11 inches, Z minus 11 inches. And we also have to decide what work offsets that we're gonna use. And this is helpful to know before we start setting up our tools. We're gonna to use G54 for all of our main spindle G15 machining, and we're gonna use G55 for all of our G14 subspindle machining. Now we've got a whole bunch of work offsets we could have used. We just chose these because they're simple. And now we get to decide what tool offsets we're gonna use for all of our G15 front facing and G14 rear facing tools. Now each of these tools has a T number that's made up of two parts, both a turret position and a tool offset number. Now normally these numbers match, like T0101 would be turret position one and tool offset one. Now leading zeros are often dropped, so T101 is the same thing as T0101. Now you can see the situation we have with these twin tool holders. We have more than one tool taking up a single turret position, so we will need to get creative with our tool numbers. Here is what we've decided to do for this particular setup. Our turret position one has two OD turning tools in it. Now we're gonna call our G15 tool T101. That's turret position one, tool offset one, pretty standard. We're gonna call our G14 tool T151. That's turret position one, tool offset 51. Why? Well, mainly because we just couldn't use offset one. It was already being used by another tool in that position. So we could use something else, anything else. When we call up T151 from within our program, it will bring up turret position one and use tool offset 51. Now we've got 99 available lathe tool offsets that we could use. And we've decided that for our main spindle, all of our G15 work, all of our tool offsets are gonna match our turret position numbers. But for our G14 tools, all of our sub facing tools, we're gonna use tool offset values 50, 50 higher, than our turret position numbers. Now, why is this? Uh, no particular reason at all. We just had to make sure that we were using unique tool offset values, and this is the system that we came up with. Let us know in the comments what system you use. The specific tool offsets that we use really aren't that important, as long as they are unique to only one tool in that turret. And if we're gonna be using these kind of mismatched tool, tool offset values, we've got to leave really clear comments in our program for the operators. Now on recent NGC lathe, a column labeled turret position has been added, which can really help keep track of these things. Now this is just a text field, doesn't do anything more than that, that we can use to note what turret position we are using with any particular offset. Learning to use these mismatched tool offset numbers is an essential skill for every machinist, and it's gonna come up on both lathes and mills. We will go ahead and set all of our G15 main spindle facing tools normally. Now we can use our ATP probe arm or we can set those tools manually. And we've got plenty of videos showing how to do that and we'll link to those in the description. But this video is all about G14 machining and we are not gonna use our probe on these rear facing tools. We're gonna set all of these tools manually. And there are a few reasons for this. Uh, the biggest of which is that there's not a whole lot of room in between our ATP arm and our main spindle for these great big rear facing tools. They just don't fit. Uh, another reason has to do with tip directions and probing and we're gonna talk about our tip directions in a few minutes. We'll start with our turning tool using this T151 to skim the outside of our part. Now to start our sub spindle at 750 RPM, we will use an M143 P750. Now from here, we will skim our part along the Z axis. And here's the important part. 
This is tool 151, not T101. So we will need to highlight and set tool offset 51. We do not want to set offset one by accident. T151, turret position one, offset 51. Now without moving our tool in the X and all, and with offset 51 highlighted, we press X diameter measure. Enter our measure diameter value, and we have set the X for this tool. Now, this is the exact process we would use to manually set tools on our main spindle, with the addition of using that M143P value and highlighting and setting that new mismatched offset value. We will set the Z on our tools manually as well, with the Z face measure, just like we would on our main spindle parts. Again, we have made a very detailed video on how to manually set tools, but there is one critical detail that we've got to talk about when setting tools manually for G14. G14 mirrors everything for us. So when it comes to our tool tip directions, if we're using tool nose radius compensations, we have to remember that we are programming everything for the main spindles. And that includes our tip directions. We have to use a tip direction that matches our tool as if it were facing the main spindle, not the sub. Here's what I mean. If, for example, we used a tip direction of three on our main spindle, we would still use a tip direction of three for our outside turning tool when running on our sub spindle. Likewise, we'll keep that tip direction of two on our sub spindle boring bar because of our G14 mirroring. So we're gonna be reversing our tip directions from what we might normally do with all of our G14 tools, especially if you're a hand programmer using tool nose radius compensations. So, Tip direction of three stays a three, just like the main. Tip direction of two stays two, just like on the main. This is how we program parts on our sub spindle. Again, if you can program this, you can program this. Thanks for watching.